value. Do you ever shoot sports? I'm gonna show you how to use Lightroom and Photoshop together to make a really easy stacking effort that shows the full action of something like a goal. It doesn't have to be soccer, or I know Europeans are gonna be saying football. Well, the whole rest of the world will say football. Um, let's get into it, but first let me thank our sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online com learning community with over 16,000 real video courses. I know you like watching videos on YouTube, but you can't really learn a skill from YouTube. You just learn little tips here and there. That's not the way they structure like a college course, right? Skillshare has actual classes that you can take with hours of, of professional teachers, skilled professionals. We walk you through it. Uh, go to stp.io slash Skillshare4 and you can get yourself a free trial. Find out for yourself whether you actually like it or not. No no um, money is required at all. And use the promo code Northrop4 if you decide to sign up. Save yourself a few bucks. Thanks for sponsoring us, Skillshare. Uh, let's hop into Lightroom here. I was showing you the finished product, but let's go back and actually look at the original images. You can see I'm shooting with this Sony A9 here, which is outrageously fast at 20 frames a second. And people say, oh, why do you need so many frames a second? And um, really the answer is you don't need it, but it gives you a whole lot of options because it's really nice that you can just pick, you know, the perfect moment, uh, these different leg positions here. And for the sake of the image that I'm about to work on, it it allows me to really show that many more frames of motion. So you can see it snapped into focus on the background of a couple of these images. So right away, I'm just gonna get rid of these images. We don't want to include the blurry pictures. Okay, so here we can see the progression almost at video speeds as she kicks the ball. Goes past the goalie and then into the goal. Now, a lot of people asked me when they saw the finished product on Instagram, I put it on my Instagram, they thought I must have had the camera fixed in a single position. In fact, I did no planning for this whatsoever. I was just trying to take pictures. And that's part of the great, the greatness of this technique is that if you don't have to be planning ahead of time. You can just go back to your old pictures, find a good sequence like this that you had on your uh, in shooting action and stitch it together to make a more complete story because it can be really tough to tell the story of somebody scoring a goal with a single photo, right? Because there's so much action in here. There was no single frame where the player was kicking the ball and the goalie was missing it and it was going in. There's nothing that would have told that story unless you were to use advanced techniques techniques like this. So let's bring these, well, first thing we want to do is make sure that they're all an equal exposure. You can see I had the camera on auto exposure, which I usually do for sports. And some of these shots are at 1 1,000th and it slowed down to 1 640th down here, just as the exposure changed a little bit. So what I'm going to do is select all of these. I click the first one and shift click the last one. And then I'm going to go to photo, develop settings and match total exposures. And what that's going to do is it's going to adjust the brightness of the images. So it's as if I took them all with the exact same settings. You want to make sure all your pictures have basically the same um, settings. But as I'm demonstrating, you don't have to have gotten that right in camera because you can fix that kind of thing in post. Uh, I actually shot these with JPEG, which I often do. Uh, with sports photos because I'm taking, you know, thousands of photos often. If you want to change the overall exposure, contrast, saturation, now is a good time to do it. So with them all selected, you could just go to this panel here and adjust the exposure, contrast, shadows, whatever. I think I'm happy with the exposure and color and everything as it is pretty much true to the camera. So I'm going to leave that. But whatever changes you make, make sure you apply them to all the images simultaneously. Now I'm going to pull them in as layers into Photoshop. So I'm going to right click them, select edit in, and then select open as layers in Photoshop. This part will take a couple of minutes. So grab yourself a cup of tea and just sit back while uh, Lightroom does this, especially if you have as many pictures as I do. If you have fewer, it won't take so long. First thing I want to do is find the first photo to start the sequence. And I should have done this in Lightroom before I, I imported it, but whatever, I didn't. I'll, so I'll just, it, it ordered the layers from first picture to last picture. So I'm just going to 
hide these layers by clicking this eye icon until I find the image that I want to be the first picture. So I'm just gonna peel these back a little bit until I get to one where she looks pretty cool. Okay, that one looks pretty good. So I'm gonna click all these layers, click and then shift click the layers that I'm not gonna use, and then I'm just gonna delete those layers because we don't need those. All right, so now what we wanna do that we have these layers selected is to align everything. So with the top layer selected, I'm gonna shift click the last layer to select everything and then edit auto align layers. And the auto is fine. All right, so everything is aligned. Let's just control minus to zoom back out a little bit so we can see the whole image. Control zero will fill it up with the whole width. So now we see kind of our whole picture here. Uh, notice that you can definitely see this kind of vertical banding because it's not smoothly blending the edges of the frame. That's something that we'll have to, to work on in a little bit. Um, we can, now that everything's aligned, we'll, we'll build a background out of it, out of just a handful of images. The first thing I wanna do is make a group for all of these. These are going to become our foreground subject. We're gonna have a separate background for all these things. So let's add these to a group and we'll call it the foreground. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate that group and we'll call it the background. And let's put the background below the foreground. That makes some sense. And for now, we'll just hide the foreground. They're the same, so we don't really see any difference. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is just pare this down some. Notice that I'm just removing layers until I start to see a significant portion of the background disappear for me. And you can already see like the banding is going away because I'm not relying on so many unnecessary photos. There are so many different ways to do stuff in Photoshop and people always, whenever I do a video, some somebody ends up commenting uh, like, oh, you did it wrong, you should have done it some other way. And it's just not any one right answer. So I know you, you probably have a different way to do it and that's cool. You can do it your way. Okay, so now we've built ourselves up a pretty good background. I just want to, for the layers that we have selected here, I wanna blend the edges a little bit. So I'm going to hit a layer mask on this layer here. And I'm going to paint the edge of this black. So I've got a nice big brush here that's nice and soft. Let's make it even bigger. The bigger the brush, the softer the edge, but you can also adjust the hardness all the way down, which I've done. So again, this is there's just so many different ways to do this, but I was actually too big, so I'm going to hit Control Alt Z a couple of times to undo that. What I'm just doing is feathering the the edge of it, and you'll see the effect here. See how I just dragged that in, and that sort of rough edge disappeared. And I can see in that particular image some of the grass, and hit X to paint black in. Some of the grass was a little clearer in another image, so. Oh, I don't want to bring anything weird in there. Okay, so let's see. I can see a little, if I turn this layer on and off, I can see a little bit of weirdness here. So let's go back to that soft brush. Whoops. First, we need to make ourselves a layer mask, and then I'm going to paint black in that layer mask. Hit X to select the black brush. And I'm just making a nice soft edge between these two images so they blend smoothly. So now I'm just like peering around at the image and making sure it looks pretty good. You can spend a lot of time making your background just perfect, getting just everything as sharp and crisp as possible, picking like parts of the background here are blurry. They might be in more in focus in other images and I could blend those together more perfectly. But, um, this is good enough for now. So you can always spend, you can spend an unlimited amount of time in any photo in Photoshop. Just to make my life easier, now that I've done this, I'm gonna go ahead and flatten these layers. 
flatten image. And oh, that's not what I want. I want merge layers. Right click them and then select merge layers. So now I just have the one background image. And I'm going to now get rid of the actual movement that got captured in this stacked image. So let's get rid of our player here. I'm just drawing a line around her and then edit, fill, content aware selected, I'll click OK. And some of that didn't work out great. So let's hit the healing brush here. Make it a little bigger. So I'm just going to paint the background in as clean as I can using a little bit of healing and cloning. Oh, sorry, goalie. Okay, this also doesn't really have to be perfect because we'll have a chance to perfect it later. We're going to be drawing balls in and the goalie back in wherever we decide that we want her to be. So if it's not perfect now, don't worry, you'll get a chance to, to nitpick everything later. I just want to kind of do things quickly now. Okay, so we have pretty much a clean slate here. Everything in the foreground layers is lined up. So whatever we show from any given layer will automatically be laid atop this background. One last thing I want to do, though, is fill in the rest of this canvas because it's easy. <laughs> and we might later crop it. We probably won't need all this space. But I'm going to hit the magic wand tool here on the W shortcut key, select that. And then what I find works best is after selecting, I go to select, modify, and expand it. And then expand it by like 10 pixels. And then again, edit, fill, and we'll use content aware fill, the lazy photo editor's best friend. <laughs> okay, so now it went ahead and faked some more background for me. Hit control D to deselect it. And we have a good enough background for now. Again, we can go back and clean this up a little bit. Uh, now we're going to go into the foreground here. I'm going to turn on this whole group and select just the parts from each picture that we want to be laid on top of it. But before we do that, I want to talk about our sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare, they have an amazing number of real tutorials taught by experts, not YouTube videos, but courses that you can participate in with projects that you can complete. You can even make these classes if you want to. Skillshare, uh, let's just hop over into our web browser here and I'll go to sdp.io slash Skillshare 4. That's the link that you can use to get yourself a trial. Look, Tony and Chelsea have just given you two months free of Skillshare Premium. I already have an account, of course, so I'll just log myself in. And you can search for, just search for Photoshop. And you will just see a ton of courses with an amazing amount of information about Photoshop. Meg Lewis here is a Photoshop expert and she has created a lot of Photoshop courses here, uh, like almost four and a half hours of courses that you can take real Photoshop courses. Then you can take them for free if you sign up for an account here. And I look through them and they look absolutely fantastic. If you're interested in learning more about Lightroom, guess what? They have a ton of courses about Lightroom too. Uh, street photography, landscape photography, aerial photography with drones, just about anything you can imagine. They have awesome courses for. So check it out. There are sponsors, Skillshare, stp.io slash Skillshare4. We'll get you there where you can sign up for a free trial and use the promo code Northrop4 and that lets them know that you heard about it from us. Thanks for sponsoring us, Skillshare. Let's get back to our photo editing. Now what I'm going to do is pick what I want from each one of these pictures. So the way I kind of find the easiest way to do this is I'll just make a mental note of where our star is over here. And I'm going to hit, uh, hold down the Alt key and then add a layer mask. And that's going to make the whole image disappear. <laughs> uh, but what that's doing is giving me a black layer mask here, which hides the whole image because any part of the layer mask that's black hides it. So I'm going to select white for my brush here. I have the brush tool and it's painting white. And then I'm just going to paint back our soccer player. And I want the ball to be in this image. So I'm just going to go ahead and paint that one in too. So all I did was I painted the soccer player in and the ball. And so now you can see the layer behind it is almost completely hidden. 
And these two shots are so close that I wouldn't want to show both of them. So I'll just hide this next one. Um, you, what you can do is you, you can kind of show overlapping. We're going to separately select which pictures want we want to show the player in and which pictures we want to show the ball from. So I want to show as much movement of the ball as possible. So as long as the ball isn't overlapping with itself, I can probably go ahead and include it. Um, but I, I'm only going to check, only going to show the player from the coolest frames. <laughs> so as I turn this layer on, Let me just make sure I haven't overpainted on this previous image because uh, it's it's hiding the ball from the lower layer. So I'm just going to make my brush a little smaller and paint around. There we go. So now because I didn't, I'm painting the layer mask a little more carefully, I can show another copy of the ball. Okay, so I think, let me see. It would get a little ridiculous if I showed the ball from every one of the frames, but I think I will show the ball from this frame. So again, I'm going to hold down the Alt key at a layer mask that hides everything, and then I'm going to go in and paint white just where the ball is. And let me see. I kind of like this pose here and this kind of progression from these two steps. So I think what I'll do is I will use the image of the player from this. So I'm going to add a layer mask here and it will be black. Oh, you know what? I kind of like this next one better. It's a little bit sharper. So All right, so I'm just painting white in the layer mask over the ball there. And everything else should shine through. You don't want to overpaint it. Uh, you know what? She looks a little cooler in the next frame. <laughs> Picking the coolest frames is a really key part of this. Uh, so for this frame, I'm going to go ahead and show the player from this. And let's add a layer mask, and then paint white in for the player and the ball. Notice that I'm just roughing it in. I'm not being perfect with my selections. I can always go back. So one challenge I have here is the ball is now in front of the player because the pictures of the ball were from previous images. That's a really easy thing to, to rectify. What I'll do is I will duplicate this layer Let's call it player two. And then I'm going to move this up to the very top up here. In fact, I think I'll move it and make a new group out of it. Let's have a player group that actually has the images of the player in it. That'll make a little things a little bit easier to see. So now this particular copy of the layer will just have the player in it. And let's go ahead and just hide the ball from that. Oops, I should select the layer mask there and paint black over it. And I want to make sure she's in front of the ball and the balls aren't hiding her. I'm going to control plus a few times to zoom in and then hold the space bar down to pan over. So I'm doing this by hand. You can do all sorts of selections to paint her feet in, but I'm just using the layer mask to paint in white and to show her foot. Oh, there it is. Okay. And then let's try to make it as clean as possible. Show the ball behind her. There's a cleat.
Okay, that's what we call a good enough job. So I think this next layer is still mostly overlapping with the previous layer. Okay, so I want to use the ball from this. That's still a little too overlapping, but let's use the ball from this layer here. You can see I, I tend to see which layers I want to use by turning them on and off. That just flips it. So I'll add a layer mask for that. Hit the B, just like the brush tool, and then I will paint in white where I saw the ball. It's convenient that the brush is around and the ball's around, right? That makes things pretty simple. And then this next layer here. Let's just see which the next player image we want to be. You can see subjectively, I'm going to kind of choose which frames I want to show. And, you know, I can show her with her leg reared back there, and that tells a pretty good story of the kick. Or I can move it forward and actually show her foot contacting the ball, which I think it's this layer that I want with her foot contacting the ball. So I'm going to duplicate that layer again. You know, I don't even need to do that. I'll just move this layer back up to the player group so we can keep track of it. Add a black layer mask and then paint in white where the player was. Oh man, I just noticed, look what I did to her arm. That was savage. I just completely cut her arm off on this previous layer. <laughs> Gotta be careful about that kind of thing. She really enjoys the her arms. Okay. Cut part of her hair off too. Uh, you can see I jumped up to another layer, and this one happened to have the background a little bit clearer. Depth of field is going to kind of vary like that. I'm just going to carefully kind of blend that in over the background. So that looks a little bit better. And now with the layer I just added, I'm going to go back in and just... Oh, I kind of select the layer mask. I missed it again. Paint white in to select her body here. Let's see. So I'm seeing, oh, I see, I see this little bit of weirdness there, part of a black shoe. So I'm just turning layers on and off to find them. That's just the easiest thing to do. So I'm going to select the layer mask there and then just make my brush really small and just hide that little bit of weirdness. So it looks a little more natural. Okay. So already as we back up, we can start to see a nice little progression. We've got three shots of the player there. And since she's already kicked the ball, that's pretty much the end of her story. So now it becomes about the ball and about the goalie. So all we need from this one, this particular, the next frame is the ball. So I'm going to hold down the Alt key, hit the layer mask, and that will hide it. But then I'll hit the brush, B, X to switch it to, switch the brush color to white. And then I'll just paint over the ball there. That revealed the next layer. I want to use the ball from that one too, so I hide everything. Paint the ball in. You can see at this point it starts to go pretty fast. It's all just hide the layer mask, paint the ball in. Select the next layer, hide the layer mask, paint the ball in. Select the next layer, hide the layer mask, paint the ball in. Uh, and you know, you can see some imperfections here. I wouldn't sweat it. You can kind of grab those later any little flaws that come up. Layer mask to hide everything, paint the ball back in. So I think this next frame, this one here, if I turn it off, you'll see it disappear. I think this is the shot that I want to use of the goalie. So I'm going to bring this up to the players group here just to keep better track of it. Oh, this got out of order a little bit. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to hold down the alt key, make a blank layer mask, and then paint the goalie back in by using white. There we are. Okay. Let's 
go down to the next layer without a layer mask. You can kind of see what's hiding here. Um, you know, I've completely hidden that layer. Let me see. Oh, yeah, I can't really show the ball from it because it's behind her. So I'll just hide that layer completely. And then for this one, layer mask, hit the brush tool. White brush, paint it in. Um, part of the goalie's hair here is covering the ball. So I'm just going to go back up to that layer and paint it in a little more precisely. I'm just painting black in that layer mask to reveal the ball beneath it. Okay, there we go. Her hair and the ball are now intact. The next layer, click it. Alt click a layer mask to create a blank layer mask, paint the ball in. You're getting the hang of this. Okay, and that pretty much does it. I don't think I needed that last layer. So as we look at our finished product here, mostly finished product, Control-Z to fill the screen with it. We can see three shots of the player kind of not overlapping where she kicks the ball, and then it tells the whole story of the ball going past the goalie and into the goal. If I start to nitpick about this and look really closely, I can see lots of little flaws here. Um, that's because I didn't construct the background exactly perfectly. You can go back and just more carefully pick the sharpest parts of each image. I just didn't want to waste your time doing that. One last thing, if you go to save it, you might get an error that it's too big because this file was over four gigs in size. If you want to overcome that, do save as type and then select PSB. PSB will store all the layers and allow it to be much, much bigger. Check out the last stacking video I made uh, where I stack images of a turn and you can see a different technique for a turn as a bird, a uh, different technique for making the background that might be more effective. I wanted to show different ways to kind of create the background for these types of images because they have different advantages. Um, I hope this helped. Thank you to our sponsor Skillshare. Get lots of great uh, Photoshop tutorials and Lightroom tutorials from experts hours long. You can participate, work with their files, join an actual course and learn it as a skill instead of just learning a bunch of tips. Go to stp.io slash Skillshare 4. That'll get you a free trial. Use the promo code Northrop4 Northrop if uh, you end up liking it and you decide that you want to continue with it. That lets them know that you heard about it from us. I also want to give out a couple of links. If you want to check out that Sony A9 with its crazy 20 frames per second, we're not sponsored by Sony. I just think that camera's fantastic. Uh, notice that it's got video stuff on it right now because it's also a good video camera. Go to scp.io a9. Or if you don't yet have a Creative Cloud subscription for Lightroom and Photoshop, you might want to get one. You can get a free trial for those two. Visit stp.io adobe deal. Thanks.